Welcome to the Fossil Rich Wilderness, the site and focus of my Master in Environmental Management project. The Fossil Rich Wilderness is a special place, dear to my heart, that I've come to know and appreciate deeply over the last two years. The Fossil Ridge lies nestled in the Rocky Mountains of Colorado, about 15 miles northeast of the town of Gunnison. For my master's project, I developed a fish and wildlife management strategy for this wilderness in collaboration with the U.S. Forest Service, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, Colorado Parks and Wildlife, and other stakeholders. The purpose of this strategy is to inform and empower local land managers to make carefully weighted fish and wildlife management decisions that respect wilderness character and, and ensure the preservation and recovery of selected priority species that are faced with direct or indirect human pressures. In the 20th century, wilderness management was almost exclusively about managing people and trying to leave the wilderness itself alone. In the Anthropocene, it has become apparent that this passive approach to wilderness management will no longer preserve everything we value in these places. As human domination of ecological systems intensifies, new pressures for active management to sustain sensitive species are arising. As a result, wilderness managers are increasingly faced with difficult decisions over whether, when, where, and how to intervene in ecological processes. In my project, I navigated these wilderness stewardship dilemmas with the Fossil Ridge Wilderness as my case study. Through stakeholder interviews and my own research, I identified four priority species for the Fossil Ridge Wilderness. These species require active management to ensure their persistence and recovery in the area. They include Rocky Mountain Bighorn Sheep, Southern White-tailed Ptarmigan, Colorado River Cutthroat Trout, and Boreal Toad. For each priority species, this strategy discusses their life cycles, needs, and threats, assesses their status in the fossil-rich wilderness, establishes management objectives, and makes management recommendations. The plan is adaptive in that it identifies contingency options for future scenarios. The plan also analyzes trade-offs of potential future management actions from the perspectives of wilderness and fish and wildlife management. The principal reason for the decline of Rocky Mountain bighorn sheep is transmission of pathogens from domestic livestock. The bighorn herd of the Fossil Ridge experienced a disease outbreak in the winter of 2007-2008 after coming into close proximity with cattle. The wilderness area outlined in dark green on the map on your left is essentially too small and bighorn migrate in and out of the wilderness. In summer, the bighorns concentrate in the wilderness shown in orange, but in winter they migrate to lower elevations as shown by the areas in dark blue. Migration patterns and disease transmission risk of bighorn sheep highlights the need for wilderness managers to collaborate across jurisdictional and ownership boundaries. Management recommendations for this species include continued aerial surveys to monitor bighorn sheep, reducing contact between bighorn sheep and domestic livestock, monitoring bighorn sheep mountain goat interactions, monitoring visitor use in the alpine zone, and seeking to promote metapopulation connectivity. In terms of contingency planning, population augmentation could be a last resort to ensure the persistence of bighorn in this wilderness. Fish stocking has taken place in the Fossil Ridge wilderness since at least 1952. The principal threat to Colorado River cutthroat trout are non-native salmonids that compete with, hybridize with, and prey on the native trout. Some current management actions taking place in the wilderness include stocking of fish via aircraft and surveying potential recovery streams. Some future contingency actions that may support conservation of this species include installing fish barriers, chemical water treatments to eradicate non-native fish in recovery streams, followed by introducing a genetically pure population of Colorado River cutthroat trout. Management for Colorado River cutthroat trout comes with many wilderness stewardship trade-offs. The untrammeled quality of wilderness would suffer substantially through actions such as chemically treating streams to eradicate non-native fish. Furthermore, management of this species highlights conflicts between social and ecological values. Fish stockings are continuing not because managers think it benefits ecological processes, but because people like the fish, which generates revenue for the state. In fact, studies have shown that most high-elevation lakes in the western United States were historically fishless. 
Fish stalking, however, has become so ubiquitous that fishless lakes that once were commonplace are now one of the rarest ecosystems here in Colorado. Going forward, I suggest that managers should consider restoring some selected lakes to their historically fishless condition. Unfortunately, this is a huge challenge because aerial fish stalking is a grandfathered in use in most wilderness areas. The state wildlife agencies that carry out fish stockings are likely to continue to exercise their right to stock fish via aircraft going forward. Regardless of where one stands on this issue, this species highlights the crucial need for collaboration between federal and state agencies. Both agencies need to identify and work toward a shared vision for protecting the wilderness character of the fossil ridge. Another priority species is the boreal toad. The principal threat to this species is the chytrid fungus, which is responsible for declines and even extinctions of many amphibian species worldwide. At this point, we know very little about this species in this wilderness. Some management recommendations for this species include the identification of suitable habitat, surveying its current distribution in the wilderness, and testing for the presence of chytrid. Contingent upon survey findings, reintroduction of this species in the fossil-rich wilderness may be warranted. Finally, the southern white-tailed ptarmigan spends its entire life cycle above or at tree line. As an alpine obligate species, this bird is considered vulnerable to climate change. Some management recommendations include inventorying and monitoring of white-tailed ptarmigan populations, evaluating ptarmigan habitat, minimizing grazing impacts, recording historic mining sites, monitoring visitor use, and keeping up with trail maintenance to protect hydrological regimes and winter habitat. Given the ubiquitous and accelerating human impacts, do we need a paradigm shift in wilderness management away from passive, hands-off management and toward a more active approach that involves ecological restoration? For better or worse, I think there's evidence that this shift is already taking place and I think managers will increasingly have to stake out a middle ground position between these two visions for wilderness management. Because of tensions between wilderness stewardship goals, managers are confronted with inherent trade-offs in their decision making that we need to recognize, communicate, and carefully evaluate. The dilemmas of wilderness stewardship are compounded and made more difficult by a context of scientific uncertainty, ambiguous law and policy, and competing values of what wilderness is, what it should be, and how it should be managed. I'm excited to share that the management plan I developed for this project has been signed and approved by the district biologist, wilderness manager, and forest supervisor. The document has been lauded as setting the national standard for management plans of this type by regional and national forest service personnel. The document has also been published on Wilderness Connect through the Wilderness Institute at the University of Montana. Importantly, the project constitutes a pilot and is already being used to develop similar strategies for other areas included in the National Wilderness Preservation System. With collaborative, thoughtful, and forward-thinking stewardship, it is my hope that the fossil-rich wilderness will provide a refuge for plants, animals, and humans alike for many more years to come. I dedicate this project to all those who venture responsibly into the fossil-rich wilderness. May you find the inspiration solitude and tranquility that you seek. I further dedicate this publication to all past, present and future defenders of wilderness. Your efforts safeguard our planet's remaining wild places and demonstrate that humility and restraint are possible in an age of overconsumption and unfettered development. I want to express my gratitude to my mentor Sally Thode and my community sponsor Joe Carlson, as well as the many individuals who despite limited time and resources gave their expertise and supported me in this project. Thank you for listening and providing me with the opportunity to share my work. You can check out the publication and my presentation to the European Wilderness Society via the links below. I look forward to answering your questions.